The Downfall of the All Blacks Imagine you are an All Black supporter, and the day is the 31st of October 2015, and the full-time whistle of the World Cup final has just been blown. Hysterics would have been upon you as the New Zealand squad and nation begin to celebrate the third Rugby World Cup. On a winning streak of 8 which continues for 10 more games, and with what is considered to be the best squad in history, featuring the likes of Dan Carter, Ma Nanu, Conrad Smith, and bloody Bowden Barrett. Nothing looks like it could go wrong, which seemed to be proving true until recently. With a third place finish in the 2019 Rugby World Cup, signs of weakness in the All Black game began to appear. These problems were left unchecked and unsolved, and through 2020, 2021, and 2022, teams were able to exploit them. The All Blacks conceded their first loss to Argentina since 1985 in November 2020, and have just recently fallen to their all-time lowest world ranking, 5th. With the question being, how did this weakness creep into the All Black game, and why haven't they been addressed? Firstly, there is no doubt for most rugby fans that New Zealand throughout history has been the most dominant nation ever at the sport. So before we cover what's going wrong with their game at the moment, it will be good to see what made them so successful in the first place. Their earlier mentioned dominance can be credited to a few different factors. Number 1. Rugby was the most popular sport in New Zealand, with the majority of schools and towns having teams. New Zealanders are introduced to rugby at a very young age, leading to more enhanced skills resulting in them able to field the superior 23 players in the majority of their games, since their first Rugby World Cup title in 1987. Number 2. The New Zealand Rugby Union have a policy which says that, to be eligible to play for the New Zealand national team, you have to play your club rugby on New Zealand soil. However controversial this may be, it has led to an increased cohesion between players because there are less clubs for players to be chosen from. An example of this is Ma'a Nanu, Conrad Smith, and Nehi Milner Scudder at the 2015 Rugby World Cup. This trio played at 12, 13, and 14 in their campaign, and as they had all played their club rugby at the Hurricanes, the chemistry between them was destructive, leading to Nehi and Comrad being picked in the team of the tournaments. Furthermore, the cohesion which New Zealand had allowed them to be the number one ranked team in the world for over a decade can also be credited to the way club rugby is set up in New Zealand. The All Black squad is only selected from five different teams in New Zealand, which all play in the Super Rugby competition. These are the Crusaders, Blues, Chiefs, Highlanders, and Hurricanes. The cohesion this created in the All Blacks' first team remained unmatched over their decade of dominance. Number 3. Coaching Team The back-to-back -back World Cup wins the All Blacks achieved in 2011 to 2015 can also be attributed to the coaching team they had in place. The All Blacks head coach during the 2011 World Cup was Graham Henry. Henry was appointed as head coach in 2004 after a brief but relatively successful stint as head coach of Wales, where he gained crucial experience. From 2004 to 2011, Henry won 85 games and only lost 11 whilst building a coaching team around him, who all learnt and thrived off him. One of these was forwards coach Steve Hansen. After the World Cup win in 2011, Henry stepped down from his role. Smartly, the All Blacks promoted Hansen to new head coach. This was genius because Hansen had already spent 15 plus years around and learning from Henry. Which meant it was no surprise when he began to emulate Henry's success and guide his side to the 2015 World Cup title. It is now clear to see how the All Blacks became to be known as the scariest side in rugby. But what crucial elements of their success changed to cause the current downfall? Prior to outlining the factors involved in the decline of rugby success in New Zealand, it is important to mention that we are not saying rugby is dead in New Zealand. The All Blacks are still boasting a healthy record in the international scene these last four years. However, crucially, it is not up to their very high standards. To begin, the popularity of rugby has significantly decreased in New Zealand with a drop of 20% in teens playing the sport in school. With less teens playing the sport, it is proving inevitable less quality players are being produced from the school system. This has meant the All Blacks are being starved off talented kids coming into their first team, which the likes of France and South Africa certainly don't have a problem with. To highlight France, their playing pool increased from 260,000 in 2000 to 390,000 in 2010. 
This increase of players has led to them producing more international standard players, which effects are being made obvious by their recent Grand Slam in 2022 and number one world ranking. In comparison, New Zealand's declining player pool has had aforementioned negative effects. The poster boy of many All Blacks fans' anger and disappointment can also be seen as a major reason of All Blacks' despair. It would have been impossible to make this video without talking about Ian Foster. Ian Foster became deputy head coach of the All Blacks in 2012 and had a similar experience to Hansen. However, when Foster was appointed as head coach in December 2019, it is no secret he has not replicated either Graham Henry's or Steve Hansen's success. To many, this was not a surprise. Foster was a super rugby coach from 2004 to 2011. Other this time, he was head coach of the Chiefs, and he never finished higher than second over eight years. This was clever evidence for many Foster was not cut out to be head coach of the All Blacks. Against Tier 1 nations, Foster has only won 13 games out of 21 and has suffered 8 losses which is a far cry away from the records his predecessors had achieved. For more on Foster's coaching style, I recommend the always excellent Squidge Rugby. Whether it's lack of imagination or unquestionable arrogance, Foster being head coach is another clear reason for the All Blacks downfall. Lastly, and possibly most importantly, the All Blacks stopped evolving. The All Blacks attack seems to be as basic as under 7 rugby nowadays. However, they previously got away with this because they were able to rely on the most talented starting 15 in the world for so long. However, most evidently in their recent encounter against France in November 2021 when they don't have the best individuals on the pitch, they have no game plan to lean on, leading to their recent defeats. This lack of evolution in their games has also allowed other teams to catch up with them and overtake them. After suffering a recent historic series defeat on Ireland to home soil, life definitely looks gloom for the All Blacks, and this has echoed in pundits' predictions for them in the next World Cup. However, the All Blacks certainly can be rescued if they address some of the key issues affecting them covered in this video. Will New Zealand recover? And will this current downfall be forgotten? It remains to be seen. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe as YouTube will share this video to a larger audience. Thank you for watching.